Hey what's up creators, today we're going to be showing you how we can set up our firing for our shooter game. This is going to be complete with particle effects, sounds and animations. By the end of this video your gun is going to be firing and looking absolutely fantastic. We're going to be learning a lot of blueprints and learning a lot of new skills along the way, so let's go ahead and dive straight into Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so the very first thing that we need to do is we need to set up an input event so the engine knows that we can start triggering events when we press the left mouse button or the right trigger on this. And of course, we can then attach all of our blueprints to this. So let's go ahead and check this. The way we can set up this input is by going up to edit and then project settings. Then we're going to scroll down and we're going to find our input tab. Inside of here, what you want to do is make sure that you've got an action mapping in here called fire with our left mouse button and our gamepad right trigger. You can have additional inputs if you want to. If you're using the template that I provided, you're going to have this already. If you're working with a project which is completely from scratch, then what you're going to need to do is create a new action mapping by pressing plus action mapping. Then we're going to be giving this the name fire. And then of course we can set our inputs in each of these little options here, such as our left mouse button, our right trigger, anything that we want. Now I'm not going to be creating any additional key bindings here as we have it already. So if you don't just copy what I've got here. So now let's go ahead and move on to the bit where we show you how to activate blueprints when we press that fire button. So the blueprints for this is really straightforward and easy. What we're going to be doing is when the player presses that trigger, simply called fire, we're then going to be setting a variable to true, telling the engine we are currently firing. Let's go ahead and jump back into Unreal Engine and we can show you how we can set this up. So because this variable is actually something related to the character, we can create this in our first person character blueprint. To find this, we can go to content, FBS assets, first person BP and blueprints. Then we're just going to double click on our first person character. Inside of here, what we're going to be doing is creating a variable. Again, variables are just data and we can set this to whatever we like. The type of data we want is a boolean because it's just true or false. Is the weapon firing? Yes or no. So we're going to go ahead and create a variable and we're going to be giving this a name firing weapon, just like that. Make sure the data type on the right hand side is set to boolean. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and compile this and make sure our default value for firing is set to false. If this is set to true, then our weapon is just going to be firing straight away and we don't want that. Having said that, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and save this. What we need to do from here is we actually need to set up our animation blueprint. So when that variable is set to true, it's actually going to start playing the firing animation, the firing sounds and the firing particle effects. So let's go ahead and open up that animation blueprint that we created previously. That animation blueprint that we created before is called arms underscore and in BP. Again, this is in the same place. It's under content, FBS assets, first person BP and blueprints. And it's in arms underscore and in BP. Inside of here, you're going to be able to see your state machine and your animation blend space that we created before. What we want to do, however, is we want to create a brand new state and we can do this within our state machine. So having said that, go over to your state machine in your right hand tab here. And if you need to go back one, just head over to that state machine. Inside of here, we're going to drag out and we're going to add a brand new state. And we're going to give this a name, weapon firing. And what we're going to be doing is in here, we're going to be putting in our firing animation. So doing this really straightforward, double click. And then on the right hand side with these arms, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding our arms underscore fire. And we're going to put it in just like that. And we can press compile. We can go back to our state machine. And what we have now is a state 
where it's going to be firing that weapon. But we've not actually told it when it should be going into that state. And that's where transitional rules are going to be coming in. We can consider a transitional rule to be just like a gate. If the gate is open, then we're going to move into this state. If it's not, we're going to stay in the current state. It's as simple as that. Let's show you how you can set this up using booleans. The way we can do this is we have this little transitional rule here, going from locomotion to weapon firing. Let's double click on this and we can see it's going that way because of the arrow. Let's double click on this and it has an option here for can enter transition and it's simply just a boolean. So what I need to do is create another variable which is basically going to be linked to the one that we created in the character blueprint earlier. I'm going to give this the name shoot weapon. Then I can Get a reference to that by dragging it into the event graph and putting it into my transitional rule. Press compile and what's going to happen now is it's going to go from our locomotion to our weapon firing animation if that animation is set to true. We also need to do the same thing for going back. So drag from weapon firing back to our locomotion and then we're going to be creating that transitional rule for weapon firing to locomotion, and it's going to be very similar. If our shoot weapon is not going to be true, then we're going to go back. So the way we're going to do this is we're simply going to be searching for the not boolean. So drag out from shoot weapon, search for not boolean, and then we're just going to put this in between. And what's going to happen now is if I go to my anim preview editor, if shoot weapon is true, you're going to see in the top left hand corner there, he's now shooting his weapon. Looking really, really awesome. The only thing we need to do now is show you how we can actually link this up to our character blueprint. Again, linking this up to our character blueprint is really straightforward. We're simply just going to be casting to that blueprint and essentially linking the weapon firing variable that we created earlier to the variable that we've got in this animation graph. And that's going to bring everything together. To do this, what we're going to do is after we've got the player speed here, we're also simply going to get the value of our get firing weapon. And then from that, we're going to set our shoot weapon equal to that value. And that's it really. That's exactly how we can link this. So we've taken the value from our first person character for our firing weapon, and then we've set our animation variable equal to that. So now what's going to happen is whenever that variable is set to true, it is going to start firing this. So the last simple bit of code that we need to do here now is show you how you can get that variable to switch to true when we press that input. It's just a couple of nodes of blueprints. Let's hop in and do that. To do this, we need to go back over to our first person character. And inside here, we are going to be creating an input action with that firing input we created earlier. We're going to right click and we're going to search for fire. Then once we press that, we're simply going to set firing weapon to true. Really straightforward. And if I go ahead and press compile now and press play, while we're holding it down, we are shooting our weapon. What we also need to do is when we stop shooting our weapon, so when we're no longer holding down left click, we are going to be telling it to stop firing our weapon. We've not got any mechanics in here for reloading or anything like that just yet. But what I want you to have is just this. We hold down left click, he's shooting, we let go of that and it stops shooting. So some really, really simple mechanics there. We can run around, we can shoot, and it's all starting to come together. The very last thing that we need to do inside of here is show you how we can set up the visual effects for this. So that being the particle effect for the muzzle flash and also the sound so you can hear this gun shooting. To do this, we're going to be taking an animation for firing that weapon and we're going to be putting some notifiers on there where we just say at this frame, we're going to play this and we're going to play this. You'll see what I mean in a second. Let's hop in. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to take our FPS arms under our arms animation BP here and you can see we've got our weapon. 
And if I go to my state machine and my weapon firing, I've got my arms underscore fire. I can double click on this to open it up and we can see we've got our animation track. We've got our weapon and we've got our arms. We've also got a track which is frame by frame. And if I wanted to, I could add animations and I can add sounds on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a notify on this track that says, hey, we need to play a particle effect and we need to play a sound. And of course, we can move these around in 3D space. So again, to get to this, what we need to do is open up that animation BP. We're going to go to our weapon firing and we're going to double click on our arms underscore fire. This is in our arms underscore and in BP. Ideally, you'd put this in a weapon, but this is a very quick workaround. So what I'm going to do under notifies, I can right click and add a new notify to say we need to play a sound. And every time the animation gets to that point, it's going to play a sound. So every shot, basically. And if we click on this animation notify, we can then change the details of this in the panel in the top right. And we can choose a specific sound. So I can search for rifle and I'm going to be going with rifle underscore shot and I'm going to be using number 20. You can choose any one of these. Actually, I like the sound of 17, so I'm going to choose that. If I press play, you can hear that gun going off every time it activates. And we can do the same thing with the muzzle flash and just make it happen at the exact same time. To do this, we need to create another notify track. We can do this by going to notifies and then track and then add a new notify track. And we're going to give this a name VFX. So we've got the top track here, which is for our sounds. And we've got the bottom track, which is for our VFX. And again, I can right click on that add notify and this time I'm going to be using a particle effect. I can click on that notify to determine how it's going to look, which is just a particle system in the top right. And I can use my muzzle underscore zero one. And now when I'm shooting, I can see I have got my muzzle, I've got my rifle and it's shooting. If you can't see your muzzle for whatever reason, what we might have to do is just move the location of this. So the reason you can't see your muzzle is because we have our location, which is currently set to be in the floor because it's set to zero, zero, zero. Let's take a look at this. If we move the camera, we can see it at the bottom there. So what we need to do is just take that location and move it up. So let's move it up by 100 to start with in the location offset in the top right. It's getting closer. And then we're going to move it up some more. So let's set this to maybe 200. A little bit too much. 150. And that looks about correct for the height. What I also need to do is slightly move it on the Y axis as well. So I'm going to move this 20. And what I want you to do is just keep tweaking these values here until you get something that looks good. I know I paused the video there, but what I just did was just took some time there to tweak the values to get something I'm happy with. If I go ahead and minimize and press play, start shooting, we can see we've got the sounds, we've got the particle effects, and it's all really starting to come together. If you want to copy those values of mine, you can see I've got the location offset 75, 15, 152, and my scale is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3. But feel free to tweak this to your own liking. That's it for this video. By now, you should have your gun in place with animations, particles, sounds, and you can shoot it with either the gamepad or the controller. I know we have gone through a lot in this video, but we now have the foundation for our gun system. We are going to be taking this a lot further as we go through this course. We are going to be setting up things like variable fire rates. We're going to be showing you how you can set up ammunition, reloading, and more. 
If you're interested in this, be sure to check out the full course on our website. Also, if you'd like a little bit of support with this course and you'd like to network with other developers, go ahead and join our Discord server. If you'd like to support more high quality training like this and unlock exclusive perks such as early access to our videos, live mentoring, and easy to use game templates, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Be sure to head over to the next video in this course, but for now, as always, stay awesome, keep creating, Virtus signing out.